He's got a he's got a beard, a white beard. Um, so Ooh, he did. Uh, but I beard. It's a glorious beard. Yes. Oh, that is glorious. Um, yeah, I'm subscribing to the beard. So, I, I... hello everybody, welcome to my channel. This is Michael Beverly. So I caught this clip. Somebody put a comment that uh, Dr. Kip Davis had mentioned uh, watching a live stream I had done with someone named Rob Lowe uh, of Sentinel Apologics while he was on Deep Drinks with David McDonald. And that the their discussion was about the case for Christ and Lee Strobel's book. Uh, but th this idea came up about the apologist biggest problem what is the apologist uh, the apologist biggest problem like this this seems like the biggest problem in apologetics and if and depending and it has in a nutshell it has to do with how they're stuck trying to mansplain everything that's obviously not what saying what they wish it would say or wanted it to say or if if it just is interpreted the way I see it, you would all understand. And then you would be joining me at blank church. Calvinist, Presbyterian, Methodist, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormonism, or you become a Catholic, or if you're a Catholic, you become a Protestant, a, pro a Protestant, a Protestant. Or if you're not speaking in tongues, you would, or if you are speaking in tongues, you'd stop. Or if you're at a church that allows women to take leading roles, you would get out of that church because it's obviously heretical. If you believe in open theism, you're going to hell. You're not even a real Christian and you would join me over here. Or if you've joined me over here out of open theism, but you're moving towards Calvinism, you're, gonna, you're wrong because Calvinists are idiots. Or if you're a Calvinist, you would gladly tell everybody else they're going to hell if they're not a Calvinist and you could prove it by the Bible because God elected who he chose to elect and the rest of you all motherfuckers are going to burn. So this is a big problem. It's a big problem for apologists and to listen to their word salads and their massaging and their excuses. If you're a Christian and you didn't quit listening to me because I said motherfucker and I apologize for that, but come on. My mom was a pastor, so I know the truth about what happens behind closed doors at churches. And plenty of pastors say plenty of worse things than motherfucker. In fact, some pastors cuss really a lot because they're constantly frustrated with people. Um, that's just the truth, folks. Can we keep it real? On my channel, I like to keep things real, as real as we can. We don't want to get kicked off of YouTube or anything. I'm not going to be taking off my clothes. That's my other job on OnlyFans and Chatterbait. And um, when I get more famous, I'll put the links to all my. I'm just kidding. Compelling argument for why that generation didn't mean how we read it in English. All right. What he's talking about here is where Jesus says he's coming back and this generation won't pass away. It's not really germane to the actual subject, just so we're not confused here. This was covered in the Satan's Guide to the, to the Bible, the viral video, the documentary recently. And look, apologists have plenty of excuses. What they're talking about here is, oh, that word means something else. Of course, there's also the wandering Jew theory. I don't know if that's probably not a popular theory anymore. Um, there's the transfiguration, because if you pay attention to the text, right after that, Jesus goes and Abraham and Elijah come down and Jesus shown his clothes were so white, not even bleach on earth could ever make them that white. And that was the power. Like Jesus had clean laundry. Never mind poverty. Never mind bringing his power to overthrow Romans and oppressive government. Jesus had clean linens. It's a miracle! Woohoo! And we get the same thing with, you know, Matthew and Luke's genealogies where they say, well, this is actually in the in the Gospel of Luke, it's actually Mary's bloodline, wink wink nudge nudge. But 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 then when you actually read in a constant theme i'm going to keep pounding home we don't need we don't need the atheists who are making fun of stuff or pointing out faults or exposing how there's all these contradictions or that your beliefs are kind of weird we don't need atheists if we just if every atheist in the world dropped dead tomorrow 
Now, don't start praying for that. It's not nice. But if that happened, you would still have almost the same amount of criticism of your beliefs by other Christians than you have now because atheists just make up a small percentage of the people that think you're wrong. I don't care what belief you are. I know Christians like to say, but we have, we agree on the main tenets. We agree on the main stuff. Yeah. And ask a Calvinist if that means you, tongue-speaking Pentecostal, or a Catholic, or if does that mean you're saved. I already know the answer, and so do you. It ain't, it ain't good enough. Come on, people. Finally, let's just listen to just a, a short couple clips, because I want to show you how silly this stuff can be. By by a philosopher, by a philosopher who many of all I've seen comments thinks one of the smartest philosophers in history. Don't get me started. Yeah, compare the, the net balance of good and bad results of God letting that happen over the next hundred years with the net sum of good and bad results if God didn't permit that. Okay, I kid you not, that last clip, last clip is J.P. Moreland explaining why 9-11 was a good thing. I, I'm not joking. You can go look, you can go watch the whole Tough Answers with J.P. Moreland at Jessup University, where he also told a bunch of university kids that God commands them to drink hard alcohol. And somebody, some, one of the Christians in the audience actually laughed. I mean, that, you can't make this stuff up. So JP's, JP's saying, 9-11, folks, was a good thing permitted by a loving God because if he didn't permit that, something worse would have happened. Well, motherfucker, is your God omnipotent and all-loving? Couldn't he have stopped 9-11 and the worst thing that could have happened if he didn't? Jesus Christ, is JP that stupid? And furthermore, it, does anyone actually believe what he just said? Like every bad thing that happens, you say, oh, World War II, God permitted that to happen. Because just imagine what would have happened if he, if he had stopped that. Jesus. I mean, I don't know how this guy gets the accolades he gets, but he's dumb as a rock. In happening, and what God should do would be to permit the option that in the long run produce the greatest amount of good versus bad. He's actually making all this argument in, in a discussion about free will. So he's essentially saying God should weigh things and and permit the permit the fr permit the free will of people to do bad stuff when it would make some would stop something in the future from being even worse without realizing his whole argument is self-refuting because the second God decides to permit or not permit anything he's squashing on people's fucking free will like duh Really, I mean, if there's any Christian still listening to me and you like J.P. Moreland, could you explain why? Like, if he was on my side, I would be like, shh, J.P., J.P., you're, you don't do what you think you're doing. You're helping the other guys. Holy Christ. Hey, I'll tell you what. If anybody in my audience can find a student that went to Jessup University maybe rough, left roughly 10 years ago that was at that thing and can put me in contact with that person, I will buy you an Amazon gift card for 25 bucks. Easy, no problem. If that person is willing to come on the show with me and do a live stream, I'll buy you a $50 gift card. I would love to talk to some students that were actually at that thing. And, and what my first question will be, so do you guys all go out and get drunk as fuck after JP told you God commanded it? Huh? I'm, you might think I'm making this stuff up, but I swear to God, it's on there. Uh, don't maybe go find the clip. Oh, Jesus. Uh, but yet there's a stigma to this in the church as though God ought to be enough. And that's ridiculous because God isn't enough. All right, just to be gracious, I found something I agree with J.P. Moreland about. God's not enough. But let me go find the other clip about alcohol. It's not a small deal. It's not like, you know, 
stealing your next door neighbor's basketball. Uh, this is a major evil. Oh, Lord, I'll get to the alcohol clip. But I just had to stop when he said theft. That <laughs> Homosexual sex, in his mind, is a worse evil than theft. I don't know. I guess he's got a different Ten Commandments than the ones in my Bible. Paul tells us that we know homosexuality is wrong, not because God commanded it, but because it's contrary to nature. And what that means is it is a violation of the way we were made to function. Jesus. This is what happens when somebody that didn't study biology and has no fucking clue what he's talking about starts yapping like he knows stuff. And this is the problem I have with Christianity's. And just to keep on track of what the subject of this whole video is about is how Christians take stuff in the Bible and they massage it to say whatever the fuck they want. Now, he's claiming that nature proves homosexuality is wrong and it's not because God commanded it. It's because it's obvious from nature. Really, JP? You ought to go talk to a biologist because there's a lot of animals out there getting it on in same-sex sex. It's actually, there's actually studies now, JP, in, in how in certain primates, this kind of behavior among the alpha males um, leads to cohesiveness and cooperation, and then they end up having a higher and more successful rate of passing on their DNA. So nature just kind of says the exact opposite of what you just said, JP. Jesus. See what I'm saying about how like this guy is dumb. But let's let him talk some more because it's actually helpful for my point. So I was on a radio show and they said, why are you evangelicals against homosexuality? And I said, for the same reason I would be against my neighbors driving their car in the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. Um, if you drive your car in the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, you're not going to have a flourishing car for very long because that's not the way it was made to function. Dumbass, if somebody's driving their car on the bottom of the ocean, that, that would mean that Elon Musk made a fucking submarine electric car. Like, nobody can drive their current electric or internal combustion engine car under the ocean. That's why nobody does that. But if JP woke up next week and saw people driving their car under the ocean, according to his own testimony, he it would be he would be compelled by God to go tell those people, you guys shouldn't be doing that. No, I mean, every time I listen to this guy, I realize that he's even dumber than I thought he was the last time I listened to him. What he's saying, let's go back to just before the Wright brothers. And Christians were saying, if God had meant man to fly, he would have given him wings. And you Wright brothers are doing something that's a sin. And I need to, I, I just came back in a time machine, listened to J.P. Moreland. And J.P. Moreland's told me, Wright brothers, Right, brothers, this thing that you're doing does not lead to human flourishing. So don't do that. You you don't fly in the air. You don't have wings. Jesus Christ. God. I, I mean, okay. Confession. I went to church with J.P. Moreland, so I have a special affinity for making fun of him. Because I had to listen to some of his services. He used he used to preach on faith and talk about stuff. And uh, <laughs> Jeez. so if somebody could convince JP to do an a two hour, I need two hours with JP Moreland. I would pay a thousand dollars for that. Two hours, and he can't he can't he has to answer my questions honestly, and he can't like end the podcast if if JP goes. JP goes two hours with me on a, on a live stream and he answers questions and he participates. I will donate a thousand dollars to the charity of your choice. And well, I guarantee this ain't going to happen, but you could certainly try. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, okay, let's get back to business. Okay. Oh my. The second way you can know homosexuality is wrong is because it's evident to the senses. Now, I'm not using the Bible for any of this. Uh, evident, if something is evident to the senses, that means you can know it by looking at it. Well, 
the earth is pretty flat. That's totally evident to the senses. And it's standing still. That's evident to the senses. Do you remember that meme, that thing with the blue, is the, is the dress blue or some other color, gold or something? That was evident, evident to the senses of people that were arguing both sides. And there's actually a science of why that happened. If you've ever seen a good optical illusion, that's evident to the sentence. Quantum superposition is evident to the sense to the senses and to our logic but you know it like this the how objects are our our senses say objects are like totally solid but we we actually know they're not totally solid um the motion of the 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 sun appears similar to the motion of the moon as if they both orbit the earth that's completely evident to our senses in fact humans believe that for a long time because it's obvious that the earth is flat still and the sun goes across the sky completely evident to the senses um mirages are evident like uh what else the size of stars so i mean many theories existed about what stars were way back in the day but it's very evident to the senses that stars are really 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 tiny little things um our perception of time is quite often evident to the senses wrong our sense of sound is often like when we hear an echo our brain sometimes thinks it's coming from the same direction but it's actually coming from somewhere else we can be, our brain can be confused about all kinds of things our senses can can lead us astray quite often so i'm sure there's many many more examples that prove that jp Moreland, with what he just said is a complete idiot but those are just the ones off the top of my head well i'll admit i cheated i asked chat gpt for some help but Keeping it real here. Okay. So if I have a key and I have a, a, a door lock and I have a trash basket, uh, it's evident to my senses that the key goes in the lock, not the trash basket. You examine male and female body parts and it's evident to the senses that the male body part was made for the female body part. The male body part was not made for the male body part. Seriously, JP, you're at a university with like adults. You can say anus, penis, vagina. It's like, come on, dude. So JP here is saying it's it's obvious. It's obvious that homosexual sex is wrong because the vagina is like a key and the penis is like a the lock, and and the butt is like a trash can. Now. Doesn't doesn't post puberty pre menopause cause women to bleed? And I'm not disparaging women's vaginas by saying blood comes out of them. What I'm saying is, doesn't that kind of defeat JP's argument here? And also, babies come out. Babies come out of vaginas. I mean, isn't that kind of gross, JP? Like babies and penises don't go together, JP. God obviously didn't want people to have sex intercourse. He wanted them to jerk off and then put, you know, spread the semen on the vagina so you wouldn't put your penis where babies go. Obviously. He's also saying that oral sex, even between married couples, is off limits because is that's the mouth is not made for a penis. And oral sex on a the mouth the vagina wasn't made to be licked. I mean, this is a grown fucking man teaching. And, and he's hailed as a smart person, as a smart philosopher. And he's at a university, you know, supposedly being presented as a smart person to talk to grown adults. God, you, and you wonder why Christians end up so fucked up when they, you know, escape childhood. That I mean, the, we could spend hours just talking about how distorted that view is, how fucked up that view is, how wrong it is. I mean... Why? Why does the prostate and the and the sphincter and the you know the anus? Why? Why does that get stimulated sexually? And why does it feel good to have something like stimulate your asshole? Didn't God make humans perfect? Then God must be for butt sex. Now, let's be real here. Not not because I have anything against bottoming, but I've just never been a bottom. But I've cupped topped a couple times much to my girlfriend's 
unhappiness because cultural reasons. I mean, she's an atheist and she's just culturally in <laughs> the Mexican culture. I love Mexicans and I love the Mexican culture, but there's some weird fucking shit that they think. And one of them is if if you're a guy who's who's penetrated, it's like very degrading in in the sense of masculinity. So, yeah. So, anyways, I have nothing against whether you're a top or a bottom or a switch. It's totally fucking up to you. It's your life. It's your body. But the reason I bring that up is making sure my girlfriend's not listening because she always gets she, she knows about this. It's not a secret, but she just gets butt hurt. Um, it's like <laughs> like sticking your penis in the butthole feels good. I hate to tell you, JP. Like there's like it's actually made it the shape is actually just like perfect and it's nice and tight and warm and now the other thing he says is oh well this is this isn't designed for human flourishing because you don't because it's not making babies motherfucker so you're saying christian menopausal women shouldn't have sex anymore that's off limits or if a guy is sterile or if a, if a couple's infertile if they find out the doctor says i'm sorry but for one reason or the other you guys can't have kids they should quit having sex. They should become celibate. JP, you're a fucking idiot. And you're also, you're the reason I'm the reason this pisses me off is because young, impressionable men and women, university age, who are told to respect JP, get confused by this fucking stupid message. So any of you, if you look, if you're young or university age, share this video with your friends who are questioning about stuff. And let me tell you. Your sexuality in your 20s is meant to be something you experiment with if you want to grow up to be a healthy, well-rounded adult. If you want to be stunted, then listen to people like JP. And trust me, I've talked to enough people that left, you know, re strict religious where they're like, oh, I was a virgin until I was 25 or 27 or some ridiculous number. That's not healthy. It's not good. Now, I'm going way off on a tangent. This video was supposed to be about fucking the biggest problem in apologetics, but sorry. That's me. I got off track. And oh, if you're wondering about my shirt, this Jew Boy uh, Burgers is a burger place in Austin. Uh, my um, One of my kids is in Austin, in Texas law in Austin. So anyways, um, that's why. It's not an insult. It's like, hey, I'm proud to be a Jew, actually, even though I'm not Jewish by, you know, I'm not a not a practicing Jew. I don't, there's nothing about my Jewishness I actually know about really because I was raised Christian and I wasn't really taught anything about being a Jew, but I'm a Jew. Um, Jews, you know, Orthodox Jews are not supposed to have butt sex either. There's reason, reason, reason. If you're in any religious thing like that, and even, I, dude, let's, can we be real here? Even atheists I talk to that I've been years out of the church, have hangups still about sex and they would never say oh geez i need to go like i need to go give a blowjob or get a blowjob from a guy just to see what it's like so call me wild and crazy but i want to know things that's how science is done motherfuckers bill nye taught me that you gotta experiment i think alcohol drinking is wonderful i i i think god is for it. I think it's commanded in the Old Testament, dude. <laughs> yeah, even the Christians laugh at JP. All right, he's going to, he's going to, real quick, he's going to explain the Bible verse that proves you're supposed to go get drunk and follow your lusts. I keep in mind he's telling this to university kids. Like, they get into trouble enough. You don't really need to encourage it. And I'm all, I'm all for responsible drinking if that's your thing. Like, at the end of the day, too much alcohol is fucking poison for your head. But lots of things are bad for you. But listening to JP, I've lost at least 10 IQ points editing this, at least. I probably lose another 10 by the time I'm done. <clears throat> hey, we're going to get to the deep drinks thing where, where it's about me real fast here. Deuteronomy says that once a year, the people of Israel were to go to, Is were to, go to Jerusalem, take money, drink strong drink and wine and spend their money on whatsoever their soul lusteth after. Well, I don't know. Going after what your soul lusts for only once a year still sounds like Christianity sucks, JP. 
I want to go after shit I lust for way more than once a year. All right, let's get back to Dr. Kip Davis and his host, David, who are talking about the big problem in in apologetics. See, I practically forgot what we were even talking about. Jesus, I need a drink. What I the issue I have with apologetics is if what they're saying is true, and this is where I want you to weigh in. If what they're saying is true, shouldn't the Bible in English say it like that? Like, shouldn't it translate it like that? So, for example, with this generation will not pass away until they see all these things happen. And then you talk to an apologist, and you're like, that doesn't make sense. And they go, ah, this generation actually means race of people. The, the Jewish people will not pass away until all these things happen, right? Well, then I go, okay, so you're saying the English translation of the Bible is wrong for our English ears. I go, no, 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 no. You just need to understand the context mm. of generation. Why? Why do I need to understand the context of the generation? Because the understanding I have is a translation of the Bible is supposed to make it easy for you to understand the original context of the scriptures. So what I'm asking is, let's say the apologists are right. Let's just grant the apologists are right for some for for these uh, for these problems. These uh, contradictions they could be right. In the Bible. Right? Yeah. Why not? Porque no. So part of the reason I got lost in this editing is I just got back from a birthday dinner with my girlfriend's um, family. And this is this is her brother who we were celebrating his birthday. And as you can see, he is a character. As a sidebar, this last, I think it was last year, he won the voice of Guadalajara, which I don't know if it, it's not as big as the voice of Mexico City, I don't think, but he's a really good singer. And of her family, he he is the best at English. So him and I can chat a little bit, just a teeny bit. But anyways, Dr. Kip saying they could be right. Why not? Yeah. But So I was just jumping in here to say, yeah, motherfuckers, you could be right. You could be like lots of people could be right. The people that think there's le reptilian overlord aliens masters running the planet from the center of the earth could be right right why not por qué no Espinosa, tengo 32 años y soy de Guadalajara, Jalisco. Decidí entrar a la voz de Zapopan porque creo que es una gran oportunidad y una gran plataforma para los talentos tapatíos. They could be, yeah. So in that case, wouldn't Bible translators shouldn't Bible translators assuming they're right shouldn't bible translators then translate those words how the apologists are saying it so for example this race shall not pass away wouldn't that be the case or is that is that going to because uh, like this this seems like the biggest problem in apologetics and if and depending on how you answer i may or may not make a video about this because this be, this is before it goes apologists, yeah apologists essentially saying that the bible is lying in english to, yeah. in english before it goes away, do you want to grab Simone's uh, Simone's uh, uh, chat there and throw that up on the screen? Uh, this one. The one with, there we go. Yeah. Well, this one. Hador. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, okay. it's the same thing. There you go. I I Hador tell. has that. So that's the that's the Hebrew for uh, this generation. Hador. Hador. Uh. Um. So. Uh, and I've asked this question a few times, as you can see, like in this one particular video, and, you know, and the question is, Mike Winger, do you know Hebrew? Do any of you all Christians know Hebrew? Por que no? Why don't you know Hebrew? Like if you really, really believe all this stuff, the Abrahamic God in the Old Testament is the foundation of your religion. You seem like you'd want to know Hebrew. Yeah, I know it's hard work. I don't want to learn Hebrew either. I'll, I'll be honest with you here. But I don't go around saying I know better than Hebrew experts what the Bible means. <laughs> that's the fun, that that you know, that's kind of the point here. And now I don't take an expert like um Kip Davis or Mike Lacona or anybody. Like I don't take any expert and just say, Oh, so and so said that. Right. I don't say I don't listen to a Sean Carroll interview 
on quantum physics and say, well, I don't understand quantum physics and Sean Carroll just said this thing, so I know that's the absolute gospel truth. But I will listen to experts and if I see a lot of experts that are respected in their field and have the right credentials and I'm not appealing to authority, I'm just saying, look, if a lot of experts that are trained and, are, and they have the credentials because they did the freaking training, then that you might pay attention to them. Like if we just if we just always go around saying, well, the experts don't know nothing, and we just evolution's not true. It doesn't matter that it's the most well established fact in science. Those guys could be wrong. I mean, Ken Ham might be the guy that got the key to everything. Right? I mean, it's, it could be true. Could be true. If I think what you're I so you're making you're making an important point here, and I actually think um, so I watched it took me like two days <laughs> to watch uh, a stream that are you familiar with this guy? He's he's I, I've only started seeing him fairly recently, but he does some good stuff. His name's Michael Beverly. Have you seen uh, some of his stuff? Um, I'm better with faces. Well, here's my face. I have arrived. It's me. Woohoo! No, I mean, in all seriousness, I really appreciate the fact, and I'm, I'm all joking aside, I really appreciate the fact that uh, Dr. Kip called me out here and said, hey, you know, he, and I can't believe he watched five and a half hours. Oh my God, he must have been drinking something. I don't know. Five and a, me and Rob talked for five and my eyeballs were like burning and Rob sometimes like, I didn't want to be rude and interrupt him, but it's like sometimes, and I know I talk a lot. Well, and I really, I really enjoy talking to Rob. He's a, he's a very sweet person. I think, I think he has, I think Rob has a great soul. I can tell, I mean, I didn't talk to him for five and a half hours cause I didn't like him. He's a very nice guy, but at the end of the day, he kept going back to the clue to why he believes what he believes. He was at a funeral for, I think, his grandfather, because um, he used a he used a pet name that I didn't recognize, but I think it was his grandfather. And so I get it. Like you can go watch my video I did a couple of weeks ago about my puppy, and I'm crying on the video. I had to wait like two weeks to even record that because I didn't want to just break down bawling like a baby. So I get it. I have empathy for it. I understand it. Rob has a good heart. And at that funeral, something happened to him by his own testimony. And that created the foundation. And so let's get back to, to David and Kip talking and what they're essentially going to bring out. And the point here is once, you know, like when Christians have this, this epiphany that Jesus is Lord, Etc., etc., then the rest of this apologetic stuff is all an exercise in confirming and proving what they've already concluded. There you go. He's got a he's got a beard, a white beard. Um so Ooh, he did uh but I beard. it's a glorious beard, yes. Oh, that is glorious. Um, yeah, I'm subscribing to the beard. So I well, thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate that. And I, I am happy about the beard. You know, I was clean shaven when I when I was first in Mexico. And eventually I figured out the truth that Mexican women, by and large, this is a generalization, like men with beards. And, you know, might not use every advantage you can. So there, so there you go. But anyways. Gracias. Oh, the reason I'm even doing this little edit is um, if you haven't already, like hit the subscribe button, follow me. Come on, I got a nice beard. I'm kind of smart, I think. Well, smart enough. I bring this up because he he had on um, uh, Rob Rowe from sentinel apologetics and uh 
on his uh on his last his last uh his last live stream i don't uh, but uh rob Rowe from sentinel apologetics gets very upset at me because i constantly refer to him as the deepak chopra of christian apologetics <laughs> uh the reason i call him the deepak chopra of christian apologetics is because he's he's like uh his he's a bright bright guy um i mean he writes his own he's a he's he's an untrained uh layman who reads voraciously uh through his enormous collection of books that he has you know over on the evil empire of biblical studies platform logos biblical software that's i'm sorry i'm never mind that uh so he, he's got this large collection of books that he's he's put together and he reads voraciously and he's he's so intensely interested in this stuff that he writes his own commentaries he's got like a a 600 page document his own commentary that he's written on the book of daniel or he's done another one on i don't know i think it's the gospel of mark i'm not sure but uh bright bright guy um he does something in the sciences like professionally i think but this is kind of like he he he's this is sort of his approach is is that he 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 takes this it's a very uh deepak chopra e kind of approach to you know the the science of the texts and the science of the scholarship and trying to fuse that with um the the mysticism of his faith um mm -hmm. it's it's amusing but it, it, he do, he went on with michael beverly a couple of days ago on michael beverly's channel and they had a five and a half hour conversation it took me like two days or three days to watch it right it was ridiculous but michael beverly I think rightly made this point because this is something that you encounter, right? When you, this is what Christian apologetics is. It's this, uh, it's that meme from the, uh, um, the dumb and dumber movie. That's the one. There you go. Five and a half that, hours. Yeah. Wait a second. He just said it's the meme from the Dumb and Dumber movie. And then me and Rob pop up and he said, yeah, that's the one. I don't know if I'm liking Dr. Kip Davis that much anymore. Wait a minute. Can I, can, which, which character am I? So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah. It's that meme from me. that Christian apologetics is that meme from that that movie Dumb and Dumber, right? So, so you're telling me there's a chance. Um, you know, it is it is yeah. uh, leaping through uh, hoop after hoop after hoop, uh, connecting you know a series of of dots on the basis of the flimsiest of um, of of historical value and then suggesting this is the explanation for the thing that can't be explained um mm. and and this is you know we, this is why when when you encounter i think just about any christian ap apologist when you raise an objection uh they always have an answer right mm. well you know it uh, if you if you collate this calendar on the basis of uh, of 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 this model that they were using back in the in the Bronze Age, then you can then then this accounts for this discrepancy and and you know these sorts of things. So um, in this in this stream, uh, Michael Beverly, this is what Rob's doing, right? He's he's connecting dots, and he's oh, if you read this this brilliant. Uh, you know, fourth century Christian father, and you combine what he wrote with, you know, something that, uh, 
J.R.R. Tolkien said in The Lord of the Rings. And then you connect that to, you know, Augustine and then back to Calvin. And, and if you look at this all through the lens of what it says in the, uh, in, in the Syrahexapla. It will be answering your questions because your supraconscious mind, it starts to do a file search and it delivers the answers to you when you need them text of you know the book of jeremiah then you are, then you understand you know you have the answer and is going through uh this sort of approach with michael beverly and at one point uh michael just goes like whoa like that's fine for you you're a bright guy but what about the you know the, the 99.9% .9 of people aren't going to get this. Mm. It's not clear, right? It's, it's not simple. It's not straightforward. Uh, because, because the, uh, because from, from a, a logical approach to the data, you can't make it fit. So you have to jump through the hoops and you have to connect the dots in these bizarre, you know, careening ways all across your page. Mm. It becomes nonsense to, to people. And, you know, I don't, I think um, uh, that's a very roundabout way of, of kind of answering your, your question or your point that, yeah, like, that that's why the text doesn't say you know uh what was it instead of this generation all righty folks this went a little longer than i had hoped it would do be but it's not five and a half hours well because i'm by myself it's if there was someone else here I could talk for a lot longer so let me close by saying again uh thank you to david and kip for that discussion thank you for the person who pointed out to me, I don't remember who that was, but thank you. Um, and I'll put a link to the to their talk, and I'll put a link to the five and a half hour marathon talk with Rob. Um, and please comment, please like, please subscribe, do all that other good stuff. I'm hoping I'm lining up some more. I'm, li I'm lining up some more live streams. I doubt many will be five and a half hours but you never know um at the end of the day if you're a christian or if you're you know whether you're a hardcore fundamentalist whether you're whatever denomination you are or if maybe you're a christian that's struggling with some doubts or thoughts the thing you got to ask yourself here is it it's not just about what dr kip was just saying about the esoteric meanings of stuff and the the hoops people jump through it's not just about that in terms of your salvation which is what a lot of people get, end up getting worried about it's not about i mean it can be about that but it's not just about that and i make this point a lot and i hope i can elucidate what i'm trying to say about life now let's imagine there's really a god who wants you to know him or her, or it, or them. I think that covers everything. Or, you know, maybe maybe gods have different pronouns, and this being, this super being, this supernatural being, wants to be known and wants you to follow some set of rules and have some sort of relationship. Wouldn't you think that that being, being, being as it's, god right or a super being wouldn't you think that being would be able to give very clear i mean i could write instructions for living a good having a good society i could do that most of most people could now we would disagree on stuff obviously like if you look at politics there's all kinds of stuff people agree and disagree on and I don't want my show to be a political show, so I don't want to start bringing up guns and abortion and pinball machines and tattoos and marijuana and blah, blah, blah. Like, it, it's just endless, right? So if, 
if God, if, let's just imagine the Abrahamic God is the is the real God, and then the, let's look at Christianity and let's look at Judaism. Now, as I said before, I'm a Jew, but not by practice and not by like I'm not saying in any way, shape, or form I believe in the Abrahamic God. I just don't. But if you wanted a set of pretty clear, well-established rules that have been around for a long time, and I'm not saying Jews don't disagree. Obviously, everybody in every religion disagrees. But it's a lot more clear than the 50,000 different denominations of Christianity. It is more clear than that. It's way more clear. It's very clear what day the Sabbath is. It's very clear that you shouldn't eat pork shrimp not shrimp salad not shrimp sandwiches not shrimp cocktail not any shrimp don't fucking eat shrimp like so i don't i don't understand that but it's a it, it's what my point being is is judaism is is more clear and once you start branching out right remember christianity started as sort of like a cult movement out of christianity that's just the fact i'm not calling your religion a cult i'm just saying that's how it started and then it branched, and then it branched into Protestantism, which has 50 million forms. And some of them are like dangerous cults where you end up drinking Kool-Aid and actually literally giving up your life. Like, And then others are just filled with manipulation and financial and sexual crimes and all kinds of terrible stuff. And, and then, you know, and then you end up with offshoots like Mormonism and Jehovah's Witnesses and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the point here is if God wanted humans to know what he wanted and to follow a set of rules so life together would be maximally fulfilling as it could be, considering we're freaking humans, then all of the Christianity stuff is just a mishmash of 50 million opinions, and you really think you are the experts that you like, that, that they're right, and all the other experts and all the other people are wrong, and that you're hearing from God, and your Holy Spirit is the right Holy Spirit, and the other guy's Holy Spirit is a deceiving demon. How do you know you're not the one being deceived by a demon? How would you know? What test... What methodology would you use? And guess what? It's kind of weird that a lot of guys that go to school because they love the Bible and they love Christianity end up as agnostic or as agnostic atheist or, you know, or, you know, or deists of some kind or are very liberal Christians. What? Why do you think that is? You think you're smarter than all those people? Come on. At the end of the day, be honest with yourself. I don't care. Lie to everybody else. Lie to your mother. Lie to your kids. Lie to your spouse. Lie to your friends. Lie to me. I don't care. Don't fucking lie to yourself. You know I'm speaking truth here. You know I'm speaking truth because you can't honestly look me in the face and say, I know my denomination and my pastor is the smartest guy on the planet and got everything right. When the second you admit that your pastor and your denomination has things wrong, then how do you know it's not all wrong? What method did you use? Do you see how this game's played? Stop. Stop making the world a worse place. I'm going to do a video. I think next week's Friday, uh, Faithful Friday's Divided Devotion will be about this Alabama ruling. That's what Christianity does. It divides people. Now, even Christians on that are now divided because it's such ridiculous law. It's hurting people. There are couples out there that have struggled for years and years and years to get pregnant, and they've started doing these IVF treatments, and the motherfuckers and lawmakers in Alabama, a backward-ass, hillbilly, dumbass fucking state, if you can get out of it, get out. There's nothing in Alabama. You couldn't pay me. If you gave me $10 million a year, I wouldn't move to Alabama. Stop. Because it's hurting even other Christians. And uh, other Christians are saying, we're trying to have a baby. Be fruitful and multiply it is what God commanded. And now you, my Christian brother, is making it impossible for me to have 
the baby I wanted because you're making these stupid laws about, I mean, the next thing you're going to know is it, after you jerk off, you got to take care of the ejaculate in a special way because that would be harming a potential life. That's how silly it. That's that that is how silly this stuff gets, and that's why it matters. And that's why I talked to Rob for five and a half hours, because hopefully there's just some person out there where the fucking light bulb goes on, and you say, "Gee, you're right." You can believe in God. You can have spirituality. That's fine. You can even believe in Jesus. And you can worship him and do what. But when you start going out and teaching this stuff to kids as if it's it's that your dogma is the right dogma. <laughs> come on. You got to know your you got to know how bizarre this is if you have any self-awareness at all. And it doesn't mean that, you know, experts like Dr. Kip or me or not. I'm not an expert. I'm just an idiot on the on the Internet. But um my point being is, I know I could be wrong. Maybe I'm going to hell. But don't tell me you're right. That's the, that's my point. We're all in the same boat. We're all subject to being deluded. We are all subject to that. Every one of us. So I know I could be wrong. And I'm prepared to pay for my own sins. I'm prepared to go to hell. If that's your God, if your God's going to send me to hell, I'm prepared to go. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else but with my friends. You got it? Thank you for listening. If you stick with me this long, I appreciate it. And I will catch you on the next one.